So thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, I know it's uh, six o'clock is not a great time because you're all hungry, but we've provided you plenty of food, so you should be okay. Um, this event is a follow-on from one we ran in May, where uh, we had students much like yourselves here just to sort of give us an idea of whether there's a sense of unity in the college and how we can sort of go about increasing that, that feeling. Um, that was a successful event and we're hoping to get some equally good feedback tonight. Um, so thank you all for coming. Um, some of the, the feedback given in, in that event has actually gone into shaping what's going to happen tonight. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick sort of layout of what the structure will be. Uh, firstly, we'll have Stuart give you a, a short introduction on, on what to expect from uh, the, entire, the entire process um, involved with around this event, not just, um, not just tonight, but going into the future. Um, then we'll have a talk from uh, Reaching Wider, uh, somewhere at the back. Um, and then a uh, talk on a College of Science magazine that we are hoping to get off the ground with um, student sort of led publication. Uh, this will be a sort of opportunity for any College of Science student to publish their ideas and, and what they think is important to the university life. Um, so yeah, aside from that, there are feedback forms on your desks there. Um, it's really important to us that we get some good feedback from this to know whether we're just sort of wasting our time trying to get this off the ground if there's an appetite for it or, or what parts of it you'd be most interested in. So I'll hand over now to Stuart and give him an opportunity to talk to you. Thank you very much. Hi, yeah. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Stuart Toomey. I'm uh, overseeing employability within the college, but um, one of my sort of broader missions is to try and build, as Adam has already highlighted, some unity and to try and excite and, bro and, and widen uh, your interest in science in general. So you could be from physics, I know a number of you are. Do you have an interest in other subjects and how can we try and make that, make that happen? Um, first of all, excuse any spelling mistakes on these slides. First rule of employability, don't be spelling mistakes about people. Um, okay, what I wanted to talk to you just very quickly was about what we're trying to do uh, within the college. So, um, as you can see, I don't know if you can read it very well, but I'll, I'll talk you through it. Ultimately, what we're looking to set up is an engagement committee. So we're looking for a student-led engagement committee who will have four key functions uh, that will operate across the College of Science. So, as Adam's already highlighted, there are feedback forms on, on the table. What you'll see on those forms is where you see a yes or no question, it's asking you an action. Do you want to be part of this? Do you want to be part of the magazine? Yes, no, yes, no. If you put yes to any of those, stick your student number in the bottom and we will make sure we'll put you into that mailing group and we'll go back to you then about whatever it was that you were interested in. Same with the reaching wider opportunity. If you're interested in that, you don't have to put your hand up now, you can just basically fill out the form and put yes, put your student number on and we'll pass that over to the reaching wider team. So anyway, back to the committee. In regards to what we're trying to set up as four key functions, the first function is looking at events like this. So uh, at the end of May, as Adam's already pointed out, what we've done is we, we arranged a, a number of elevator pitches. So students were coming from each department across the college. So we've got six departments. I'll try and name them now, but no, it's uh, computer science, mathematics, physics, bioscience, chemistry, and then there's always one more, geography. Thank you. I didn't really forget. Um, but basically what we've done last time was to get students um, to come in and talk about their projects, talk about what they were doing in a, in a very five minute elevator type style pitch. Very interesting, I think the, the event was well received. If that's something that, we, that you'd like to explore, we'll happily facilitate that. What's my role in this? My role is very much as, as, as a provider of some finances to make it happen, you know, access to printers, etc. But ultimately it's not my forum, I'm certainly not leading on it, I'm certainly not <coughs> taking it forward, it's a student led idea. The other one is about approval of, of, of funds for academic societies. So what we're really interested in doing is being able to support societies who um, perhaps are looking for funds to do academic-based trips, visits, etc. But actually opening that, that opportunity to attend those visits and trips for all students across the College of Science. So what we would like to do is we'd like to see the committee approve anything that comes in from a society. But one of the remits that I would like to see is that the society opens that offer out to all students across the college, markets, it markets that trip, that visit, that excursion to all students across the college. Again, the idea is about the opportunity to broaden your horizons around, around the area of science. 
Where am I now? Yeah. Okay, um, the third element is basically we're looking for some way to provide a platform to promote the, vo the, 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 the student voice sessions and also the access to the wider science agenda. Um, so we're looking at ways of, of basically that the committee can act as a, as, a, as a voice piece to speak to students. I mean, I think you can tell here we haven't had a massive turnout despite the 200 flyers we put out and the posters and some social media uh, presence. But ultimately, we, we, we're really looking to spread the word here about how we can get more students to engage with this. And that's one of the remits I think the committee can take forward, whether it be for a Facebook portal, etc. It, it shouldn't be done by me because of students don't like me. Uh, there, there's another reason for that. Um, I'm only joking, I'm very, I'm joking. Okay, and then finally, really, it's just to act as a base for the student reps. I mean, we've got a, a, a massive amount of student reps this year. In fact, I'm sure Adam will, will, will tell us how many. How many, Adam? We've got lots. 37. So there's 37 student reps across our, our five, six, uh, five, six departments. We want those guys to be involved in this, uh, you know, and, and, and we need to find a way, a home for them that they can start to share their experiences, feed into Adam, uh, but basically use the committee as that, that body that can not only house and provide support to the student reps, but also to, to the societies. So that's really the function of, of, of a committee as far as I see it, but that's very much just what I think. It's not necessarily what it has to be. It's entirely up to anyone who wants to be part of that committee to take it forward. I'll shut up now. Okay. Is it over to you now, Adam? I think so. So, me again. Um, some of you here don't know me. I think most do quite well, unfortunately. Um, but I am the College of Science undergraduate rep, so you'll be seeing me about a lot through the year. Um, for those of you who are subject reps, I know there's at least three in the room. Um, I'll be basically your first port of call for any problems uh, relating to your subject areas and things like that. But that doesn't mean that you that aren't subject reps can't come and approach me and say, oh look, I have this issue, um, I'd really like to, to get it sorted. Um, so aside from that, I have a lot of uh, activity with societies, <coughs> particularly academic, um, as you physicists will know. Um, so this committee does mean a, a sort of a fair amount to me. I mean, I'm I'm happy to, to facilitate anyone getting involved with it, and I think I'll take a fairly active role. So you'll be joining me on that, hopefully. Um, yeah. So to be a subject rep is to look after people in your your group, uh, to make sure that they have everything that they need to succeed academically and to be happy in what they're doing. And this is a list of all of the College of Science subject reps, um, as well as the vacant positions. So if any of you, uh, do we have anyone who's not physics or computer science? I've spoken to those so far. Do you have any others? Yeah. Uh, and last year's test. Yeah. And bio -sciences. Biosciences. Okay, so biosciences might well do. Biosciences. Oh, but anyway, this is all available on um, online um, on the Student Union website. So for those of you who don't know who your subject rep is, you can access this quite easily. It's just under Student Voice on the Student Union website. Um, so these people are really your first port of call uh, for any issues you have. Um, I'll be about afterwards for, for you all to sort of chat with me about anything you, you can think of in terms of bringing the college together. I think that's my... My main aim for the year is to give us a sense of unity between departments and not just uh, we're physicists, you're computer scientists, you're bioscience people. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to have a, a good year with everyone. And yeah, thank you very much. There you go. Hi, yeah. Um, thank you very much for inviting me. My name is Sam and I work for an organisation called Reach Your Mind, which is based on campus. Now, coming at it from an employability point of view, uh, I'm kind of reaching my employability champion and uh, I go to a lot of committees and meetings where they talk about getting extra skills and I think being part of your student voice is going to be brilliant for you, so please do get involved in that, that sounds excellent, because it will just make you, you stand out against um, all of the other students um, and you see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of application forms, so anything that can make you look more engaged, more interested um, is brilliant. 
which I guess is why they've invited me over um, to come and offer you another opportunity then on campus. Reaching wider is government funded. So we are based on campus, but we get our money from HEFQ. And uh, HEFQ give us the money to work with young people to try and encourage them to stick with education, to explore their opportunities um, and think about coming to university ultimately. We work with primary school all the way up to year 12 pupils, bringing them to campus, um, going out to schools, um, doing things from very short one hour workshops all the way to a three week residential. Um, but in order to put these events on, um, it's absolutely key that we have student help. Uh, we call them student leaders. So I'm here to offer you the opportunity to be added to our student leader database. Now we have, um, it's currently 300 students on there, but I'd say probably 80 that work for us maybe once a month, and then 40 that work for us more than once a month. Um, it is paid employment, so we pay um, £7.75 at the moment, which is just, uh, it's due to have a 1% increase soon. Um, and we can offer you the opportunity to come join us and be a student leader. Now, it's all ad hoc. You literally reply to emails which we send out once a month and we say, look, these are the events we've got on this month. We give you a brief description of what they are. It doesn't even matter if you think, oh, I have no idea. They could, they, like, this month there's a creative writing one. You're scientists, so you think, oh, I'm not so sure about that. But you could still tick it if you are free to work on that day. It's meant to fit in your timetable. And we tell you, you need to be available on this date between this time uh, and this time. And you just say, yes, I'm available or no, I'm not. Okay, we train you, um, and then if you're successful, we, we um, and to be successful, it just means that sometimes we're oversubscribed. So we look down the list and we try and get people as many opportunities as possible. Try and slot you in. We try to get a broad range of subject areas. We try to get a broad range of um, uh, years then from sort of um, first years all the way to master's students um, and PhDs occasionally. Um, we try to get a gender balance, a mixture of people who've worked for us before, that sort of thing. Um, and then we reply and we say, yep, yeah, please do come along on this day. That's where the training kicks in. We'll train you. Um, we'll provide you with a very snazzy yellow t-shirt for you to wear for the day so that the students know who you are. And you will work with a group of students for that day. Um, everybody's always really scared and is always a bit put off. It's like, well, what if they don't listen to me? What if they don't do this? What if they do do that? It never happens, touch wood and everything. Um, but we give you worst case scenario training <coughs> anyway. But there's always at least one deliverer in the room, if not two. You stick your hand up, you come over, any problems dealt with by us or the teachers. So that you are there literally just to do what you do and that's facilitate the day. Any issues or problems, we sort out that. So don't be put off thinking, well, I'm not so sure. I might well like to work with the younger ones, but what about the older ones? Give it a go, definitely give it a go. Because uh, we can offer you the opportunity to apply for your he uh, a hero board as well. So that will go on um, to your certificate um, if you um, complete the sort of the evaluative feedback. So to get a bronze certificate, you have to have worked for us about three or four times and evaluate what you've learned, what you've gained from the experience. The more work you do, you can go through getting a, um, a silver and a gold award as well. Uh, I appreciate I talking really fast and at you. Um, I'm going to leave some leaflets at the back of the room, um, which just sort of outline our project, because we have got government targets and the reason why we exist. All of that will be explained on there, um, just for you to have an idea of the, our background. But the other leaflet on there, which is one more important to you, literally says, look, what can we offer you? CV experience, um, we can offer you the paid employment, obviously, and the, the training. You don't need to have done anything in the past, okay? In order to be um, eligible to go on our database, you literally just have to say, um, my name is, my student number is, my subject area is. We often we ask if you speak Welsh or not, because that is, um, some of our days are through the medium of Welsh, and that's the only other question we ask. You go on the database, and you literally just reply to our emails that are sent every month. Uh, it's not always generic uh, uh, days, sometimes we do have subject specific days as well, so I said there's a creative writing one um, now in a fortnight's time, but we often have science days, maths days um, as well on campus, so sometimes um, your subject area can be very useful, obviously you're more likely to be picked on those days by your subject area. On the generic days, I'm just trying to get a spread, so I'm trying to get across all of the different colleges. Um, 
that people who come to work for us are not just one of the teachers and lecturers. I taught for six years and I tell everybody, do not teach. It's, it's the last thing that you should do. You should try other things before you go into teaching, I promise you, because it'll always be there. If you, do, if you have that as a passion, then yeah, go and do it. But don't just fall into it as a career because um, that, that, that's not what it's about, I guess. Um, so our students, last year, I did a plot of where they came from, which colleges and what they went on to do. And only four went into teaching of the 80 that work for us very often. Um, the most successful ones went on to do things like, um, well, Adam, and you won't mind me saying, because he's one of our case studies, Adam went on to work for Tarmac. Um, in a very high paid job in the middle of London um, and he wasn't actually invited to take part in the graduate entry scheme um, when he interviewed and the skills he used and the, and the experience he offered then um, they took him in a, a, the level higher so and he, he was very very sort of um, well, very grateful for his experiences because he could, he literally, as part of the interview process, he took over the table, he got them organised, he sorted them, and it's exactly what he used to do on our race days and events and stuff like that, and he actually did it as part of his interview. So we do think we've got a lot of transferable skills. Um, nobody ever works for us once. Uh, that's also a claim we can genuinely make. Um, so people do tend to enjoy it and then want to come back again. So if you are interested, I'll leave the flyers at the back. Um, feel free to drop an email if you just want to ask a question beforehand. Otherwise, you literally just have to say, please add me to the database, and we will do. All right? Thank you. Right. Um, just a, a quick point from me, tagging on to the end of that Reaching Wider talk. Um, Cure reports are really important. It's a sort of university verified CV, basically. So you can write anything on your CV. Sometimes they'll check it up, sometimes they won't. The Cure report will be sent to your employers and they can see this person has done this. The university is telling me that they've done this. So it's really important. Um, also, these um, days can count towards uh, the C Award if you've taken part in that at all or heard about it. Um, well worth looking into, and those can count as your twenty-five hour. Um, hours. Yeah, it's twenty-one hours sort of work experience. So that can all count towards that, which also goes on your year report. So these opportunities are vital for you to sort of improve your employability and make yourself a better student all around. So I'll hand over to Sarah now um, yeah. for the magazine. Okay, so I'm Sarah Roberts, this is Rianne Mira, um, so from Physics and Sales and um, Geography, and we're here to promote the College of Science magazine. So I put some flyers out on the table in front of you. Basically what we're thinking and what we'd like your ideas and thoughts on are, we, we've, there's three of us who sat down and thought about it would be good to have a whole College of Science magazine. <coughs> so rather than just like physicists doing something, geographers doing something, chemists doing something else, having a cross college magazine that's importantly run for students by students. So I'm going to be going off for a few months uh, tomorrow, so that's why Rianne's here, because Rianne's going to be taking the, the sort of academic lead, if you like, so somebody to guide you and everything. Um, so that the idea of the magazine or the ideas that we've come up with, again, it would be up to you as students what you'd want to see in your magazine if you thought it was a good idea. But we were thinking things like writing up field trips, um, things that are going on in your department, maybe like popular science articles. Um, what else? If you do a dissertation and you want to write up a short article about your own work, that'd be fine. If you want to interview someone interesting. You know, if one of your staff has been given a teaching award or something like that, or if you know someone really interesting in the science world, or yeah. just reports about anything you want to do, really, it would be for you guys. From our point of view, we might hand it out on UCAS days as well, so prospective students could see what kind of stuff we get up to. And be if the societies do anything interesting, if uh, geography goes on field trips a lot, and about the other departments, but if you guys do anything like that as well, so it would be we'd be sort of facilitating maybe the first episode. Yeah. And yeah. sort of getting you guys going, and after that, if you are happy and you've got ideas, then it will be totally up to you. Um, it wouldn't be too time onerous either, really, because the <coughs> thing is, we're thinking 
maybe start off as an online magazine, print some things out for, for the UFS day visits because it would be nice to promote what you actually do in the college. Um, but, you know, totally up to you if you decide that it's a good thing to do, whether you do it monthly, whether you do it every two months or whatever. It would look great on your CV. If you're interested in science communication, science outreach, then that's something that you can get involved with through the magazine as well. And I've got some contacts, at least in some astronomy magazines, so I could get them to come in and do a sort of workshop if you wanted. Um, but, um, what was the other thing I was going to say? CV? Workshop science communication. It's a nice way to get to know people as well. Yeah. You know, like you were saying, everyone's either from one department or another. It might be quite nice. You might find someone who has a massive passion, maybe not about the same subject, but the same concept, you know, or somebody really likes doing interviews and someone really likes taking pictures. You know, so it might be a nice way to meet other people who have got the same kind of interests as you guys. Yeah. So if you are interested, so you might think it's a good idea, but and you might be interested in like writing one article or doing you know, writing a word search or something, but then apart from that, you, you, haven't got, you don't think you've got time, then just make a little note on the sort of questionnaire, okay? So it's not like if you say you're interested, then we'll be knocking on your door every day for the next year or whatever, saying you have to write a 500 word article, nothing like that, okay? It can be as much or as little input as you want, but obviously there will need to be like an editorial committee and stuff. Yeah. Sarah's obviously disappearing. Soon, not disappearing. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> we are a tag team. Um, yes, I'm going to be the official contact point for at yes. least six months, yeah. and Sarah will be back. And um, I can communicate through Facebook with you, even if you're not checking the work email. Yeah. So if you come to me and you want to discuss things further, then we can run that. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you guys know Jenny Stanford from Geography. She does a lot of enthusiastic talking. So we'll come across her if you haven't already. Somebody just roll their eyes in here. <laughs> Jenny's really, really lovely and really enthusiastic, and she's also part of the team. Um, she couldn't come tonight. So, again, it's up to you guys what you do. If you would like us to take a bit of a lead on the first one or two, just to get the ball rolling, that's fine. And also, we can sort of advertise it out to more people as well, because if it's just you guys, that would be a lot of hard work for a small group of people. Um, but totally up to you. We can help as much or as little as you want. Okay. And we will hang around afterwards as well if you've got questions and stuff. You're too shy to put your hand up the last time. Okay. Okay. So I think that sort of about rounds out what we wanted to sort of convey with you tonight. Um, I hope this has been a sort of fairly enjoyable experience in terms of you know, getting to, to know what's actually available for you in the college. Um, some people don't know who their subject reps are, some people don't know that there are these extra opportunities in reaching wider and places like that. Um, so hopefully this has opened your eyes a bit. Um, like I say, I'll be about for a little bit longer to uh, to take any questions and, and just generally uh, speak to you all about various things, anything you like. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for coming and uh, have a great term. Thank you. <laughs>